my gosh, guys, this is incredible! All right, friends, it's time for the Diamondback recap. If you guys tuned in last week, you saw that we finally got to bring our hovercraft out for the first time. Now, for safety reasons, we didn't want to try to drive this. We wanted to actually have this done through a radio link. We had tremendous success with the power of the bags and the ability to hover. We even got to carry Stefan around. But we also had some reality checks with the Ford propulsion system. Now, fortunately, we have some really cool ideas to be able to address that. This week is where we take all the crazy wiring that Dave has been working so hard in building, and even his custom battery, and put it inside the hovercraft one final time. And then instead of wiring it to a radio control link, we're going to be putting it to switches and many other components that have been repurposed from our full scale airplane right here on the grounds. Along with that, we're also going to be working on some key interior pieces to really finish off the look and the feel and the function of our hovercraft. None of this would be possible without our good friends and project sponsors, Diamondback. They believe in this project, they want us to dream bigger, and they're helping them make it happen. We've been using Diamondback products on all of our trucks for over a year now. It is absolutely instrumental in being able to take these big projects all around Edgewater and even launch a few off the top of them. Huge thanks to Diamondback. We have a lot of work to do. Let's get to it. All right, so I'm working on our hovercraft right now, and I kind of had an idea, and I went with it, and hopefully Josh likes it, but I took uh, the transponder out of our 310 airplane that we did a while back, sitting out in the yard. I figured how cool would it be to have some knobs and dials and stuff out of the cockpit of it to put in our hovercraft. So uh, yeah, this is the transponder. Took it apart, took the front end face plate off, and I basically 3D printed some parts that put potentiometers back here, and this is gonna be our bag controls. We'll have an on and off, and then we'll be able to control each motor in the bag separately to adjust our pressures. Um, that's gonna do the actual blower motors that go to inflate the bag. and the main motors that blow down underneath the bag. I think it's kind of cool and it just adds a little bit of character to it. So I'm gonna get back to it here. We're almost done and on to the next thing. Oh, that is incredible. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, you can turn them. Can I? Yeah. No one they, they, they have a stop. I made a stop on them, so they only turn one direction, and they stop all the way at the end. Oh my goodness. They go one through seven. I love that, the click. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that click. People are gonna freak out. And then these two, those are actually servo testers that I hooked up for the actual, you know, to control the the the, the so ones that are run off regular use. So you decased servo testers to make them yes. work. Yes, and I found the potentiometers with the right, um, you know, resistance. I just need and to. I just need to go on vacation more often. <laughs> That's gonna look so incredible. I mean, it's gonna fit yeah. the time period and everything. I, th I think it'll just look cool in there. Oh no doubt. Just real, real simple, but very efficient and effective. Oh, gorgeous man. Great work. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So while we've been working on the hovercraft, Michael's been working on his own special project. If you guys remember our FT Guardian, it is a really cool, fully enclosed, kind of like a Cinewoop style drone. We ordered a frame through PCB Way that is custom carbon fiber, and we've been putting it through the test. This thing has so much power. Michael's going to be putting the Carbon Guardian to the test to see how much weight it can lift. And he installed an Insta360 X3. Now I'm sure if you guys have watched our content, you guys know how much we love our 360 cameras. The new Insta360 X3 features half inch sensors, 60 frames per second, a larger battery life than ever before, and also a huge touchscreen. These Insta360 cameras are absolutely incredible capturing amazing shots, whether we're flying paramotors, a 20 foot B17, or we just want to make sure we never miss the action. These cameras are not only incredible for capturing content like what you see here, but also for everyday life. And another great feature is the invisible selfie stick. Whether you're flying a huge hovercraft around and you don't want the stick to be in the shot, or you're capturing your own content and you want that third person out of this world perspective, the invisible selfie stick is gonna make sure you capture everything and it also looks great at the same time. And you guys can pick up your own Insta360 X3 camera by simply clicking down on the link below. All right, so we're ready for our first test with all of my, uh, I don't know, wiring. <laughs> yeah, that's a work of art. Okay, so it's real simple. Um, basically you have two positions on this, or three positions on this switch. There's off, and then there's um, accessories, I guess, like for our stereo, whatever we decide to put in it. And then on, which actually inflates the bags if you want. So accessories runs that 12 volt bus bar? Yes, so I'm gonna put that on. You just heard the relay yep. kick on. And then the next one. That kicks on everything. 
And then this one and this one should be our leak blower motors. Yeah, it works perfect. Um, yeah, a little bit of tidying up to do, and well, this is clean. we're on to finishing the dash. We have a center console that's gonna go down through here. I got some upholstery to be able to put in, and then ultimately we're gonna have more of like a, uh, an iPad or a touch screen up in the front that's gonna give us the ability to have like GPS and all this cool stuff we'll probably never need. Radio? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm thinking stereo and everything. Stereo. And also um, the, uh, uh, battery management system runs off of Bluetooth too, so we can program program that in too, so we can actually watch the battery voltage on, on, the, the, screen. Yeah, on the screen. If you guys remember in Star Wars, there was like a center console and it bumped up and it had like more of like an opening, like a like a panel there. We're gonna put all that stuff right there, kind of put our own little special twist on it. Still keep it old school, but at the same time have some new technology in it. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Okay. Right. So um, yeah, on to the next step, I guess. Yeah. I'll start designing. Awesome. So I just got in my office, I've got Fusion 360 fired up. I'm gonna start working on the uh, yoke for the land speeder, I'm trying to make something that just fits in the hands really good and also looks good inside, inside the vehicles. Now, we just got a new toy and it's right here behind me. It's the Epsilon W50 3D printer. And I can't wait to try this thing out. We're gonna use it on this thing, so I'm gonna get to it and we'll be back with you in a little bit. Oh, that part's too loud. So it's Monday morning, our 3D print is all done for our yoke. I'm so excited here, I'm having trouble talking, but we're gonna get this peeled off and see how it actually turned out. Wow, so now it's just time to get these supports off of here, and this is water soluble filament, so all I have to do is dunk it underwater for a little while, and hopefully they disappear on their own. Man, this is kind of hard. That is a weird feeling. if we can to have the throttle quadrant start here and go that way. Okay, yeah, that's not a problem. So that way we can remove this if we need to and it's not gonna have anything attached to it. Because you have a piece of wood under here already? Yeah, there's wood under all of this. Awesome. So we're at the stage now, Dave did a great job of getting everything all built, all the wiring's done. We have a couple things we're gonna be cutting out of the hot wire uh, machine, uh, which is basically gonna hold the transponder now, our control unit, and then also a really cool, uh, like a double dim radio. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're planning anyways. Um, we, we just need to kind of figure out and map everything out in our heads before we put it on paper, yeah. I guess, the best way to put it, right? Typically when we design airplanes, you know, there's going to be the look of the airplane and how the flight experience is. This is the first thing we're riding in, and we're also going to be controlling, so we want to make sure that everything that we're touching is what you'd experience getting into a real car or something you'd actually pilot. Right. And uh, so that means when we push the throttle forward, we don't want it running into... Um, the, the control unit, or we don't want it to interfere with the body, and uh, we also want it to look good too. Who would have thought we would be car designers, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if we ever design an airplane, this seat is going in it. Yeah, yeah, but definitely. It's comfortable. It is. It's ridiculous. Um, let me grab the steering wheel too, and I'll kind of mock okay. up where it's going to sit so okay. you can see what you think. Cool. So once we have a game plan with everything, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those measurements and that placement, I'm going to go to my computer, I'm going to draw the profiles, and then I can take that over to our Hotwire Foam Factory machine, I can cut those pieces out. The cool thing is, if you don't like it, we can either sculpt it with our hand tools, 
or we can just change the profile, go back and cut it again. All right, so I have this printed out, and this is made out of ABS. Originally, I was gonna do nylon. Okay. It didn't quite work out right, but okay. um, ABS will definitely hold up in heat, and I'm thinking it's gonna be sitting right about there. That's what do perfect. you think of that? Actually, probably right, right, right there. about there. It's actually, really, let me see from here. It's kind of awkward if you have your arm inside. Yeah, but it's not it's not bad because if I if I use both hands, it's like this. I got full deflection. I don't think the Star Wars uh, vehicle was really planned for comfort either. You look at like the windshield came all the way back here, and right. and he was sitting like low but high at the same time, yeah, and like yeah. laying down. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and actually he was sitting lower than what the bottom of the vehicle was. <laughs> Um, which, uh, yeah, there were a couple of people that even talked about possibly putting mylar over top of the bag. And yeah. we might look into that and see, because like that'd it. be kind of neat. It would make it more visible. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to sit this right here and yeah, then yep. can I use the pieces you made and I'll measure off of it. And it's going to, this is going to be right about here. Yep. Okay. I'll measure all this off. I'll make a profile. Um, I'll run it by you beforehand. We'll make sure we get the side and the oh, side and the front so and all that stuff. And good then, deal. Uh, and uh, by tomorrow morning, the rest of this should be printed and I should be able to have it like, roughly put together so we have exact measurements of it. So by the end of the day, we'll have a, a mock-up of what it's gonna look like when we, when we drive it. Awesome. Or fly it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, here, run it in my hand. So while Dave is working on the electronics, I'm working on the pieces that the electronics are gonna sit into. And I'm gonna hot wire cut those out. Mainly this is gonna be the center console and it's also gonna be the upholster for the seats to give it that cool spacey look. Uh, the center console is gonna hold the transponder which is now our master control unit. And also above that, we're gonna have a rolling map GPS, uh, mainly just an Apple CarPlay doubled in radio. So we can play some cool music, maybe we can have a rear view camera on it. Um, and also, it'll just look really cool. So I'm gonna finish this off and I'm gonna go up to manufacturing and get that cut out. But also, I was getting a little bit sentimental here. And recently, if you guys remember in our previous episodes, I took a version of our VersaCopter Slim and I sent it out to get prototyped. That's working out so well. I thought, why not revisit some other older designs? There's one design of a multi-rotor that I absolutely love and I miss like crazy. And unfortunately, I just simply don't have any more. And that's the bat bump. I had an absolute ball with this quad flying through an abandoned warehouse with my good friend Chad Capper and David Vendestol. I want to reimagine and recreate that board and then send it off to PCB Way, much the same way I did with the Versacopter Slim, and see if it's everything I remember it to be. And the ability to draw something and send it off to PCB Way is not just something flight tests can do, that's something you guys can do too. So I'm going to go ahead and hunt down the original files, I'm going to do a couple tweaks, and I'm going to send that off to PCB Way. If you guys have an idea or a prototype that you want to make a reality, check the link in the description below. You can use PCB Way to make that a reality. All right, so I'm up here in manufacturing in our hot wire foam area. Uh, what I have right now is I have three different views drawn of the center console. Uh, one's gonna be from the side, one's gonna be from the front, and one's gonna be from the top. This is gonna give us a very complex shape only using the two axis feature of this hot wire cutter, making it incredibly easy to do. This is something that you guys can make templates of and use a bow as well to be able to cut your own pieces at home. All right, the three different files are all done. Everything cut out great. We're gonna need a little bit of sanding, obviously, because we gotta put some radiuses in some areas that we couldn't just simply cut out. But otherwise, I think it's gonna look great. Let's take it back to the shop and see how it fits. All right, so I just wrapped up all the wiring here, and rather than try to explain the stuff as I was going along, I decided to wait until after I was done so, so I could explain it to you guys on how it all works. All right, so what we have here is a bunch of solenoids. And this first one is gonna be our 12 volts, which is our accessory relay. And basically how it's gonna work is the same way that a car works. We have our uh, controls right here. And this switch over here, there's three positions. All the way down is completely off, which is gonna turn off power to everything. You turn it in position one, and the light's gonna turn on on the dash. And then it's gonna turn on this solenoid, which actually activates all of the accessory modes, like our stereo that we wanna put in, and any other possible 12 volt stuff that we would have. Now from there, you actually flip it to the completely on position, which would be like kind of uh, turning your car on. And it's gonna turn on these other four solenoids. And what these other four solenoids do is they control power that are going to these switches here. Each one of these switches controls a different part of the bag and how it inflates. The first two are gonna be our actual bag inflation. The second two are our big motors that are gonna push air underneath of the bag. And on top of that, we also have our batteries and everything down in here. So we have 18650 batteries. And these packs, um, I recycled some of the batteries from the leaf blowers, and we also bought more. 
and I basically just put them all together and made it so that these power our inflation of the bag. And then we have a giant battery pack that's way down in the bottom here. That's gonna power our main blowers that's actually pushing air underneath of the bag. On top of that, we also have our battery management system down here and our ESCs that control our inflation of our bags. So that's our basic wiring on the land speeder. I've got some 3D printing to do. I'm gonna get back to work. All right, so I'm back from the manufacturing area. I got my, I'm just gonna call it E.T.'s head. It looks like E.T. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it? Oh, no. Oh, yeah. oh, oh. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be the area where are gonna, we're gonna have basically a double din screen. Uh, right here, we'll be able to do a whole bunch of really cool things here. We obviously have to do some sanding, some forming, a little bit of angle changes here and there, but let's see how it fits. Pressure. Is that pretty centered right there? Uh, no, it's gonna go your way, so. Right there. Right there? And there it is. Pretty, pretty good. Now it's ET's head in the Star Wars hovercraft. <laughs> and I also got the uh, throttle done, so we gotta cut some stuff here and get this put in as well. I love it. And that's gonna mount down under here. Yeah, um, basically, imagine that, but we're gonna center it in there. Yep. Probably right in there somewhere. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah, let's get some uh, more work done and on to the next thing, right? Yep. All right, so we are closing another week here. It may not look like a lot's been done, but a tremendous amount's been accomplished. Yes, we got all the wiring done for the bag lifting and hovering, basically. Yep. Um, we got a new TV screen. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> yep. Dave worked really hard to repurpose a old transponder unit from our Cessna 310 to make that our control unit, which will control the bags, the blower motors, emergency shutoff. Yeah. Um, there was just a lot of 3D printing and a lot of small stuff done this week, yep. but it's all part of the process. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe bell because next week we're going to start putting the finishing touches. You can see everything is roughed in. This is the part where we basically have everything built and configured. Now is where everything's going to start taking its final form. We're going to start getting hard coating on. We're going to start finishing, putting the assemblies together. We got to take this from an RC hovercraft to a hovercraft that we can fly. That's going to start as soon as next week. So make sure you hit the subscribe bell and we'll see you next time. Take care. Wow. <laughs> 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 <laughs>